Hi, thanks for joining. Today's reading of Neville Goddard's The Power of Awareness, going to be Chapter 8, Renunciation, which is different than resistance, isn't it? There is no coal of character so dead that it will not glow and flame if but slightly turned. I like that. There's no aspect of your character that's not going to combust once you give it just a little bit of attention. Right? Resist not evil. Don't resist it. Engage in it. Right? Whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. I like Professor Jordan B. Peterson's interpretation of that, which is that it doesn't mean like, you know, be a simp and be like, okay, you can abuse me. You missed a spot. You know what I mean? Instead, it's a little bit more of don't participate in an escalating cycle of violence or evil in this case. You know, it's about lack of engagement. Energy flows where attention goes, right? When you resist evil, you give it your attention. You continue to make it real. When you renounce evil, you take your attention away from it and you give your attention to what you want. Now is the time to control your imagination and give beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You give beauty for ashes. When you concentrate your attention on things, remember chapter six, attention? When you concentrate your attention on things, your focus determines your reality, right? As you would like them to be rather than on things as they are. You give joy for mourning when you maintain a joyous attitude regardless of the unfavorable circumstances. You give praise for the spirit of heaviness when you maintain a confident attitude instead of succumbing to despondency. In this quotation, the Bible uses the word tree as a synonym for man. You become a tree of righteousness when the above mental states are a permanent part of your consciousness. You are a planting of the Lord when all your thoughts are true thoughts. He is I am, as described in chapter one. I am is glorified when your highest concept of yourself is manifested. Because you are I am, you are God. When you have discovered your own controlled imagination to be your savior, your attitude will be completely altered without any diminution to religious feeling. And you will say of your controlled imagination, behold this vine. I found it a wild tree whose want and strength had swollen into irregular twigs. But I pruned the plant and it grew temperate in its vain expanse of useless leaves, and nodded, as you see, into these clean and full clusters to repay the hand that wisely wounded it. Hmm? Right? That's like that whole waste of energy thing, you know? Again, when we engage evil, right? When we give it our attention, when we combat it, right? When we resist against it in opposition, we dignify our enemy and encode their power. Resisting is literally a waste of our energy, just bleeding out. Concentrate that. Concentrate that. Focus like a riverbed channeling a stream. By vine is meant your imagination, which in its uncontrolled state expends its energy in useless or destructive thoughts and feelings. But you, just as the vine is pruned by cutting away its useless branches and roots, you prune your imagination 
by withdrawing your attention from all unlovely and destructive ideas and concentrating on the ideal you wish to attain. The happier, more noble life you will experience will be the result of wisely pruning your own imagination. Yes, be pruned of all unlovely thoughts and feelings that you may think truly and thy thoughts shall the world's famine feed. Speak truly, and each word of thine shall be a fruitful seed. Live truly, and thy life shall be a great and noble creed. Thanks. If you like this sort of thing, you know what to do. Listen to your heart. What does your heart tell you? All right? Your focus determines your reality. What do you want more of in your life?